but we were hoping that he was the one that would bring things back to normal. Going back to normal is something we are all talking and hoping for these last four weeks. Or has it been five weeks? Sometimes it feels like five years or five centuries when things are not normal. It has been several centuries, actually, in Israel that things were not normal. When the two disciples, who didn't know that they were talking to Jesus, told him that we were hoping that things would be like the good old days when David was the king. They were not talking about five weeks ago. They were talking about a number of centuries ago. They were hoping that Jesus was the successor of David, the promised Messiah, that like David, he would make sure that Israel was a big and powerful kingdom, not a tiny oppressed province of the Roman Empire. The problem with that hope of going back to normal is that things were not really that good when they were normal. David, the king that Peter spoke about in the first reading, wasn't so smart and wise as his son Solomon will be after him. His morality and ethics were somewhat questionable. You remember that he fell in love with Bathsheba, who wasn't his wife. Beforehand, he was accused of having an affair with Jonathan. So it was a mixed bag. And yet, a few centuries later, people would talk about David and his times as the good old days. Unfortunately, the good old days of Israel were not good for everybody, and they didn't last that long. For very short afterwards, first the Assyrian kingdom conquered tiny kingdom of Israel. Then the Assyrians were conquered themselves by the Babylonians and Israel became a Babylonian province. When the Babylon kingdom collapsed, Greeks came around with Alexander the Great. And when the Greek empire collapsed, Romans conquered Israel. So the poor Jews, the poor country of Israel, had idolized the time of David because for a long time they didn't have their own kingdom or their own kings. Interestingly enough, in the times of kingdom of Israel, the kings would not be crowned. Unlike in England, when there's a big ceremony of the coronation of the new king or queen, in Israel, there was no coronation. The ceremony consisted of anointing of a new king. A jar of olive oil was literally spilled on the head of a new king. I don't know if they believed that olive oil was a good conditioner for your hair, 
but that's what they did. And the Hebrew word for anointed one, someone who is a king, who was anointed with oil to be our ruler, is Meshach. In English, we translate it as Messiah. Two of the disciples on their way to Emmaus told the stranger, we were hoping that he was the promised Meshach, the promised Messiah, who would bring things back to normal, who would make our kingdom independent, powerful again. And we were disappointed. Now, the interesting part of that story is that these two men recall women who came from the empty tomb and told them, he has risen. So they knew, as they were talking to the stranger, that he has risen. Moreover, they say, two of us, John and Peter, ran to the tomb and they confirmed what women said, because who believes women, right? So we sent guys and they confirmed what women said. He has risen. But things did not go back to normal. So we are disappointed. So we quit. We go back to our old lives. And this is the problem that many of the disciples experienced when they realized that Jesus, whom they believed to be the anointed one, to be the Messiah, would not bring things back to normal. As a matter of fact, Jesus told them many times, there is no going back to normal. Normal wasn't good. Normal wasn't just. Normal wasn't fair to everyone. Yes, if you were a king or high priest, you had it nicely. Your life was overflowing with wine and honey and milk. But if you were paid minimum pay job, if you were working a custodial job, if you were working in cash registry, if you were a teacher, your life wasn't good back when it was normal. So the resurrection of Jesus did not make things go back to normal. The whole point of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection was, was to convince his audience that the normal wasn't working, that the normal they were talking and dreaming about of the good old days of King David and Solomon wasn't good. There is no point of going back to normal. The resurrection of Jesus showed us that we need a new normal, a better kind of normal, a more fair and just ways to be society, to be the church. So before I hear you say again, I want things to go back to normal, ask yourselves, do you really want them to go back to normal? If you are a white privileged guy as I am, perhaps normal was good for us, but it wasn't good for everyone. It wasn't good for the majority of our society. 
the normal we are talking about was never a society we as Christians should live in. The way we talk to each other, the way we fought with each other, the way we gossiped about each other, the way we disrespected each other, the way we treated immigrants in our society, the way we treated those who work menial, low-paying jobs, was not normal. It wasn't right. It wasn't just. Jesus, in the Gospel story of today, explains to these two apostles that things have to change. That there is no going back to normal, that Israel will never be a great and powerful kingdom again, because his message was not about that. His message was about bringing love and justice to the center of attention. If your normal is about you going back to your privileged life, it is not resurrected normal. If your normal is meaning that you can ignore the needs of others, that you can ignore the health and well-being of others, you didn't get the message of the resurrection. If you are unable to see Christ, the risen Lord, in the stranger walking next to you, if you are unable to see Christ, the risen Lord, in the underpaid teachers teaching your grandchildren, if you are not able to recognize Christ, the risen Lord, in a beggar by the exit ramp on Interstate 44 asking you for a change, you did not get the message of the resurrection. We can't go back to normal. We have to go to a new way of living, a new way of being church, and a new way of being a fair and just society. Amen.